Hello, brothers and sisters. This cup. Jesus entered into the garden. He is going to pray to his Father. As Jesus prayed, he was given a cup to drink from. In this cup, Jesus sees our iniquities, our sin. How deep is the darkness of sin? I would like to start by saying, I just want to go home, but must finish the race. In this, I pray that you see the deeper meaning of what is being said. I am just a man trying to express that which has been revealed to me. Also, I am seeing how this writing in particular is tying in with everything else that I have written through the Holy Spirit. I would never willingly mislead anyone. I am not smart, and that's a good thing. I am not all-knowing. This is also a good thing. I only want of what our Father in Heaven gives, nothing of myself. I am merely speaking the words put upon my heart in the best way that I can. Many people come against those who are speaking what God has put in their hearts to speak. For this is the latter rain, the raining down of the Holy Spirit. And there will come many scoffers, mocking, pointing fingers, whisperers, haters of righteousness, haters of the one living inside you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He lives within you. He covers you in his mantle, like when Elijah left his mantle for Elisha. Also, when Jesus was raised up by his own power, he left his shroud, the cloth that he was buried in. This is a foreshadow showing us how we would be covered, covered in righteousness. The wicked cannot stand it, bringing every form of torments. Their evil deeds will be for nothing but stubble, blowing in the wind. Yet, how they will try pulling you down. Nonetheless, God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. This is the latter rain. What happened in the Garden of Eden? This that is presented is only one aspect, as we cannot fully understand the fullness of what actually happened in the Garden. We can only have faith, open our ears, our hearts, listen, and piece together that which we can through study, praying, and of the revelation through the Holy Spirit. For we must understand that Adam and Eve knew nothing of good and evil. They were told not to partake or even touch it, for they were made from truth, which is our Father. And they walked and talked with God. Now, God said to Adam, You can eat of any tree of the garden, but not this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Neither shall ye touch it. For in the day that you do, you shall surely die. Not you might die, not it's possible that you could die, but you shall surely die. When you eat of this tree, you will be blinded to the truth. They then saw that they were naked and they were ashamed. Ashamed? Why? Because they lost something. They knew that they had rebelled against God, and they hid themselves and tried covering their nakedness. When you eat of this tree, you will then take it upon yourselves the responsibility to distinguish between good and evil. You will truly know, see, and dwell where the darkness and the light clash. For you see, the earth rests between the light and the darkness. There is friction, a conflict, a battle. You will be vulnerable and even participate in wickedness. 
You will also be manipulated into thinking that your works will grant you entrance into the kingdom of Yahweh. However, it is only through Yeshua, Savior Messiah, and His work through the cross. In partaking of this tree, of the, in partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. All are appointed once to die, and all my children, they did cry. But through my son, the work is done. If you eat or partake of this tree, you will then define and dictate for your own personal selves what makes up your construct of good and evil, bringing out the imaginations of the heart. Imaginations are not truth. Imagination is what we see running rampant in this world. Everyone doing the imaginations of his own heart, disregarding the truth as they see through as they see their own truth, which is not the truth, but fables and rebellion against the truth of God. You will claim that, is your, that it is your right to dictate for yourself and others the difference between good and evil. It is something that has separated us from God. It is rebellion against God, for he said, do not eat of this tree. If you eat from this tree, you will live in a place filled with sickness, heartache, pain, suffering, absolute darkness. There is a massive difference between truth and good and evil. If you do something good, it doesn't mean that it's truth. Likewise, in doing evil, it doesn't mean truth. Doing something good is just good in your eyes, likewise with evil. Although truth can be found in these things, nonetheless, truth is truth. I pray that you see what is being said here. God sent them out of the garden, lest they partake of the tree of life and live forever in sin. Okay, brothers and sisters, I'll be doing the next one very soon. God bless each and every one of you.